Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Derek Butler, Associate Medical Director at the Two Help Everyone Health and Wellness Centers and Assistant Professor at Charles U University here in Los Angeles. I'm here in this video to talk to you about Hepatitis C, some key points, and also about Hepatitis C in our HIV infected clientele. Many of you may not be aware of this fact, but there are actually more patients living with Hepatitis C in this country than HIV. There are approximately 3.5 to 4 million Americans who have Hep C to this day. However, the conundrum is that only about half of those patients have actually been tested and even fewer are in treatment or in care and on therapy for hepatitis. What the bright spot in this is that there are great treatments for Hep C currently in development and even more to come in the near future. With these facts in mind, the CDC has actually made new recommendations regarding screening for hepatitis C to increase those numbers, to increase the numbers that people screen to at least 100%. It's been found that baby boomers, those patients who were born between 1945 and 1965, may be at the highest risk for hep C. And the current recommendations indicate that all patients of that age group should be screened for hep C and if found to be positive, referred for treatment. So what exactly is hepatitis C? Um, hepatitis C is a virus um, that infects the liver, and specifically the liver cell. And by doing so, it actually can cause what we call liver fibrosis, which are the first stages of cirrhosis of the liver. And the liver that is cirrhotic cannot function normally, which can lead to end-stage liver disease and ultimately uh, death of the patient. And in some cases, in some cases, actually liver cancer. Hep C is transmitted similar to HIV and other viral hepatitis, such as hepatitis B. Hep C is transmitted through, uh, through blood and body fluids. So most commonly, patients who have been infected with Hep C um, receive their infection from intravenous drug use or sharing needles from a needle stick, maybe in a hospital setting. Many patients received Hep C from a blood transfusion, which happened typically in the early 80s um, or early 90s before the blood supply was screened for Hepatitis C. And a small percentage of patients have, have received Hep C from sexual contact. You cannot get Hep C from casual contact, such as kissing, um, hugging, sharing food or drink from a toilet seat, or, or, or any basic contact without the uh, presence of blood. The good news with Hep C infection is that approximately 20% of people with Hepatitis C actually clear the infection initially. Their body's immune system actually takes care of the virus and clears the virus on its own. The other 80% develop what's called chronic hepatitis. And the danger in this group is that approximately 10 to 25% of those clients will actually develop cirrhosis of the liver. And another 5% of those clients will actually develop liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma. This process can take anywhere from 10 to 20 years. So many patients living with Hep C don't feel ill and their livers actually are, are, are actually still maintaining function, but some may actually be developing cirrhosis slowly. And this is the case for why we're screening patients for Hep C to prevent that severe liver disease. What are some of the symptoms of chronic hepatitis C? One of the major symptoms is fatigue. Others include body aches, um, poor cognition or, or, or brain fog, they call it, just feeling cloudy in terms of the thinking. Some patients who have a more advanced liver dysfunction may end up with what we call jaundice um, or yellowing of the skin or icterus, where the eyes become yellow. Patients may develop headaches, also gastrointestinal problems. Some patients have frank swelling of their liver and pain in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. It's important for these patients to be referred as soon as possible for treatment once they've been diagnosed to prevent any further damage to their liver.
Once you've tested a person for hepatitis C, it's important now to consider certain important laboratory tests. Um, one of those is the hepatitis C viral load, which is similar to what we do in terms of testing for HIV, because it's important to see that there is actually virus still present in the body uh, for the patient, and at what level of hep C, what level of the hep C virus is existing in the patient currently. The other important test is what's called the genotype. And hep C comes in several different genotypes. Those that are important in our country are genotypes 1 through 4. There are actually six genotypes that are known, but the first four are those that actually are found presently in the United States in any significant number. The most common is genotype 1, which is divided into genotype 1A and 1B. Less common are genotypes 2 and 3 and 4. These are important because the type of genotype actually determines the type of treatment you're going to use to take care of your hep C patient. The next extremely important bit of information that you would need in terms of working up your hep C patient is to find out how far along is this patient in term, on the path towards cirrhosis. And that involves assessing what's called the level of fibrosis in the liver. This is done through several methods. The most accurate is what's called a liver biopsy, where the patient actually has a piece of tissue from the liver taken, usually through a needle, um, to see exactly what's happening in the liver tissue, to see how far along that patient is in terms of hep C. More recently, more non-invasive technologies have been developed um, that can assess fibrosis and are being used more and more commonly to uh, avoid complications and discomfort to the patients. One of those is the fibroscan, which is a type of ultrasound, which can look deeply into the liver tissue and see if there is any scarring fibrosis, which could be leading toward uh, cirrhosis. And another test, which is a blood test called a fibrosure test, which actually assesses several important um, liver functions and other, other lab tests that are influenced by the liver to, to actually predict the level of fibrosis that the patient may have. And these tests are becoming more and more acceptable especially as we are having a larger and larger population of patients who are testing positive for hep C. So these should be at your disposal and are important in terms of working up the patient toward um, when you're going to treat them for the hepatitis C. In addition to your monitoring for laboratory or imaging or even a biopsy for the patient, it's important to assess other factors in terms of their treatment. One of the most important is, is the patient uh, a user of alcohol. It's recommended that any patient with active hepatitis C, which you've determined by doing a genotype to look for virus, that any patient who's, who uses alcohol should stop um, alcohol um, intake, primarily because of the dual effect of, that alcohol has on the liver, which may be um, enhancing or making worse the, the effect of the hepatitis C virus on the liver itself. Also, you need to assess the general health of the patient. Does this patient have other comorbidities, such as kidney disease, diabetes, HIV, or some other type of illness that may influence their success or may influence the pathophysiology or the course of their hepatitis C infection? It's important also to assess in the patients any other substance abuse issues they may have. The patient uses injection drugs, um, such as heroin, uh, methamphetamine, uh, cocaine, which also could interfere with liver function and also their treatment success. One of the most exciting areas in terms of hep C treatment now is in, is in involving our medications to treat hep C. Uh, up till now, in the recent past, we've used primarily two medications to treat hepatitis C. Those were interferon, and ribavirin, which are both uh, immune modulators or um, medicines that don't act specifically on the virus but actually boost the body's immune system to, to treat the hepatitis C virus and get rid of the infection. There's been very limited success with these medications up till now. Really with only about 20 to 30 percent of patients specifically with genotype 1, the most common, actually being cured using these medicines. But in the past two to three years, New medications have emerged which have changed the face of treatment. 
and these are what are called direct acting agents. These are medications that actually stop the, the replication of the hep C virus in the liver cell, in the hepatocyte, similar to the way HIV medicines work. And these are called DAAs. Um, some are called are protease inhibitors, which inhibit the protease of the hep C virus, and others are nucleoside inhibitors, which inhibit certain areas in the virus, which lead to its copies being made in the cytoplasm of the hepatocyte. The new medicines to treat hepatitis C have been remarkable, and remarkable in the fact that they cure hepatitis C. Um, one of the differences between hepatitis C, which is curable, and HIV, which is not, is the fact that the hepatitis C virus actually does not enter the nucleus of the liver cell. The HIV virus actually enters the nucleus of the T cell or the immune cell that's attacking and establishes itself there. And unfortunately, our medications can't attack the HIV virus there. But Hep C, its virus remains out in the cytoplasm of the liver cell where the medications which are targeting its replicative process can stop its replication and actually clear all the virus out of the body. And this can be achieved with three months of treatment as we found in recent studies. So we're going to talk about the newest Hep C drugs that have been approved for treatment and those treatment regimens which can cure our patients for Hep C really in a remarkable fashion, better than we ever have been able to in the past. Currently, there are seven medications which are approved for the treatment of hepatitis C by the FDA. But again, more to come, many more to come in the near future, but currently seven. And those are PEG interferon, ribavirin, which are both immune modulators, and then direct acting agents, two of which are protease inhibitors, one called bolseprevir, another um, telaprevir, and also now three other direct acting agents which are nucleosides, sofosfavir, semeprevir, and ledipasvir. The standard treatment for hep C involves using these drugs in combination. And what's remarkable is that now cure rates for hepatitis C using these combinations of medicines are approaching 90 to 95 percent in most patients including all genotypes. This is remarkable considering that in years past achieving 30 percent cure was considered the best we could do. The treatment choice depends on genotype. The newest medication is a combination of sulfosfavir and ledipasvir, which is presented as a one pill once a day option to treat patients with genotype 1. Typically those who are naive, um, without cirrhosis, um, and without evidence of more advanced liver disease. A listing of all of these combinations and indications for treatment are available in our resource section, which you will see at the bottom of the video and also at the end of our presentation. The treatment for genotype 2 is actually much easier and does not involve using um, PEG interferon. Patients can be treated for 12 weeks with sulfosfavir and ribavirin without the injectable interferon. Patients with genotype 3 actually require 24 weeks of treatment, 6 months versus 3 months, but again can be treated with an interferon-free regimen using sulfosfavir and ribavirin. The reason that treatment without interferon has been developed and has been emphasized is because traditionally treatment with interferon has involved extreme side effects that patients have suffered with and made it and that has made it extremely difficult for patients to stick to the treatment which in those days would last up to six months to a year. Some of those symptoms of, of, of treatment with interferon included flu-like symptoms like body aches, fevers, weight loss, depression, um, um, nausea, um, extreme, extreme mood swings. And the ability to actually not use this medicine is, has been an advent and a, such a positive development in terms of treatment of hep C that it's really revolutionizing what we're doing. So hopefully your clients, once you screen them and assess their risk and their level of fibrosis, will be eligible for these treatments. 
the good news is that even more medicine is being developed now, which is really proving that interferon treatment may eventually be a, com a complete thing of the past and something that we won't have to reach for when we're treating our hep C patients. Now, in terms of treating our patients who are co-infected with hepatitis C and HIV, it's important to add a few caveats. Patients who have both infections should understand that they are at risk for progression really in a negative manner from both diseases. So what this means is that patients who have HIV and hepatitis C can see a worsening of both of those conditions if either one is not treated. So the standard of care now is that patients with HIV who have hep C should have their HIV treated first because you really would like to boost their immune system that's going to assist in treating the hep C and keep that as well as possible. So try to achieve an undetectable viral load for HIV first. Raise the T cells to a level higher than 200. And then attempt to treat the hepatitis C. It's important to keep in mind which medications the patient is taking for HIV when you choose your hep C treatments. Because a few of the hep C medicines, which you can see in our, in, in our resources, may have interactions with their HIV medications. So choosing a correct antiretroviral treatment for HIV will actually set the patient up for what medicine they'll take when they're treating their hepatitis C. A few other key points um, that I think should be emphasized in terms of treating your hep C patients is to make sure that they are also vaccinated against hepatitis A and hepatitis B. This is really important as you would not like for that patient to receive a second uh, type of viral hepatitis on top of their hep C infection. I can't emphasize enough the, again, the encouraging our patients to stop uh, alcohol abuse if they are drinkers and when they have hep C. Studies have shown that patients who, are, who abuse alcohol have much higher rates of cirrhosis than those who don't. And to achieve uh, high rates of treatment success, it's important for patients to remain abstinent during that period. The last is that understanding that patients can be cured of hep C but they are also always at risk for reinfection with hep C. So it's important to assess what behaviors led to them um, actually becoming hep C positive, maybe from uh, intravenous drug use or from unprotected sex, and for that patient to understand that, that once they're cured from it at this point, it doesn't make them immune to it and that they can also be reinfected with hepatitis C and to encourage them to um, take preventative measures if they can to prevent reinfection. And lastly, for those of us treating both HIV and hepatitis C co-infected patients, understand that liver disease is the second leading cause of death in our HIV patients and that all our HIV patients should be screened for hep C and hopefully treated as soon as possible, as physically possible. Once you stage them, have them on antiretroviral therapy and control, um, then hep C treatment should be done as soon as possible. We're in an era now of excellent, excellent treatment for hepatitis C, um, which was on, up until recently a very difficult disease to treat. Um, and the future looks bright, and we possibly can see, could possibly could see an end to hep C in the near future with the type of medicines that are coming out. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope this information has been useful, and I hope that it encourages you to research further and feel more comfortable in addressing hepatitis C in your populations. Please see our resources for more detailed information. And once again, thank you for considering um, treating your hep C patients. Thank you.